So you finally got your guitar, it's all tuned up, and you're ready to go, you're ready to learn your first song, right? Well, maybe. So, before you start actually playing it, your guitar, which you might be feeling, you know, can we get going already? Um, you want to learn a few things about how to actually practice your guitar, because everyone knows practice is important. You know, if you're a musician, you have to put in the hours, otherwise you're not going to get good. But, just as important as how much you practice, is how you actually do the practice, okay? A lot of people say, practice makes perfect. And that's mm, sort of true. Um, practice makes habit. If you do something over and over again, um, you're training your mind and your body to do that same thing over and over again. And that's not just music, that's everything in life. Um, and so therefore, you know, it doesn't take too much logic to realize if you don't practice well, the thing that you will learn um, is whatever you're practicing, whether it's good or not. So practice doesn't make perfect, practice makes habit. I think what people mean when they say that is good practice makes perfect. So you want to make sure that the time and the hours that you're going to put in is actually going to be valuable to you and productive and will make you a better guitarist. So here are a few tips on how to practice your guitar well. First thing, don't practice too long. Uh, I know you start off thinking, okay, I have to, to put in lots and lots of hours, and over time, that's true. Um, but I would recommend no more than kind of, well, I think the ideal length is kind of 15 to 20 minutes. Uh, if you want to practice longer than that, then do 15 to 20 minutes and then have a break. And let your, your fingers and your mind and your body relax for uh, a little while, maybe take 15 to 20 minutes away, and then come back and, and practice again. Um, the reason why is if you practice a long time, uh, like say you practice an hour or two hours just consecutively, okay? Um, particularly at the beginning, for instance, if your fingers just aren't strong enough, okay? Over the um, time of your practice session, your fingers will get more and more tired. And as you get tired, your technique will deteriorate and your concentration will deteriorate. And as a result, what you end up practicing with your fingers and with your mind um, won't be that good quality. So, uh, you know, if you've been practicing for say 60 minutes, your first 20 minutes uh, will probably be valuable to you and you'll learn some, your hands and your um, brain will learn some helpful patterns. But like minutes, uh, you know, 40 to 60, um, most people will be too tired and that actually won't be adding much to you as a player, okay? So practice in short bursts and do that frequently, you know? Think about how people learn things like how to tie their shoelaces, okay? Usually it's not the case that someone says, you know, today's the day, I'm gonna spend four hours practicing to tie my shoelaces, right? And then after that, I get it down pat. You know, rather than that kind of lengthy, drawn out, once upon a time, um, uh, once for all kind of practice session, how do we learn to tie our shoelaces? Well, we do it, you know, once, twice, and then we do it every day, twice a day maybe. Um, and the, the repetition over time is what develops that technique and it becomes second nature, okay? So that's the kind of practice you wanna have with a musical instrument as well. Secondly, you wanna sit properly. Now, often, you know, all the focus is on the guitar, but uh, like, you know, and how you hold it and, and where you're pressing it and all that kind of thing. Um, but your body, our bodies, are a set of muscles, they're all connected together, right? So what you're doing up here and, you know, down here, it all connects to how your, your arms and your hands are going to function to play the guitar, okay? So sit properly, I'd recommend sitting on an actual chair um, rather than on a bed, cross-legged. Um, you want to sit up straight, not like, you know, oh, someone's watching me and I have to uh, be really upright, but in a way that is um, relaxed, uh, even though, um, you know, at the beginning, you're trying to watch what's happening on the guitar and you, you're actually constantly hunching over to look at what your fingers are doing because it's not second nature yet. But after you do that, you don't want to play in this kind of hunched over position. It's really, really awkward. It's a bad uh, pattern to set. So as much as possible, you should be sitting relatively up straight. If you need to look, go ahead and do that and then go back to a more relaxed position. The reason why you want to try and uh, get your whole body in the right position is that tension in any part of your body um, will translate to tension in your fingers and that will ruin your playing, okay? So if your shoulders are tense, or if your back is tense, or uh, if you're hunched over, all of that's gonna translate through your arms, into your hands, into your fingers, um, and it'll have an effect on how you're playing, and it's, it's not a good one. So you wanna be as relaxed as possible um, whenever you're playing, and whenever you're practicing, therefore. Okay, thirdly, and this is a really, really, really important one, and it goes against you know most people's instincts when they're uh, trying to uh, play a guitar. 
like like most people, when I first started playing, um, I had a particular song that I wanted to learn how to play. And I was like, yeah, this is why I'm picking up the guitar, right? And so, you know, I'd put on the CD, I'd figure out what chords I was meant to play, and then I would try and play along with the, with the song on the CD. Um, which is insane because you're trying to uh, learn all of these changes and do it at the speed that the song is playing, right? Um, and, you know, they might be very, very... You, well, not very, uh, not maybe, if they're on a CD, they're going to be very, very good um, musicians. And so, you know, they can do all sorts of crazy fast changes, which uh, as a beginner, you're not ready to do. So practice slowly. Um, and what I mean by that is, you know, for instance, suppose um, the song that you're playing, you have a, um, a G chord that goes into a D chord that goes into an E minor. Okay, that, that's, that chord progression um, who will play 90% of Western music. So how do you go about practicing that? Well, um, you want to, rather than trying to match the chord changes to the uh, speed of the song, you want to think, okay, what's my first chord? Get all your fingers in the right spot, be relaxed, have as little tension in your body as possible, and then think, well, what's the next chord that I'm moving to, okay? Now, think about what that position is, and then literally move one finger at a time to practice that transition. So I would think, okay, um, the main fingers I'm gonna need, well, instead of these three fingers, I'm gonna use these three fingers. So I'm going to let go of my little finger. I'm gonna think about what's my next movement. Uh, I want my middle finger to come down to the top E string. So I'm gonna move that down. And then I think, okay, what's next? Well, my index finger can pop in there and that leaves a spot for my ring finger and now I'm in position for the next chord, and then I'll repeat that process again when I think about, okay, where are these fingers gonna go, okay? Now, that process, obviously, if I was actually playing the song, I've totally missed it, right? But the important thing is, when I'm actually playing it at proper speed, you know, G, D, E minor, um, I want to make sure that my movements are as efficient as possible, right? That I'm not moving extra distance or I'm not moving my fingers in a weird convoluted way to get to the chord that I'm, I want to get to, right? So in order to get that <coughs> movement right, the, that efficiency, um, you have to practice them really slowly so that you have the right path. And speed comes later. You can add speed in later um, and that's, that's, you know, um, will come in due time. But you want to practice slowly and get it right. That's the important thing. Just like we said, you know, it's not practice makes perfect, it's the right practice makes perfect. So if it's particularly, if it's an unusual chord change, um, I remember there was a song I was trying to learn which went from E minor to a B7, which is just an uncommon chord in itself. So I had to use all four fingers and I just wasn't used to getting my fingers in this position. So what I did was, uh, for my 15 to 20 minutes, I would just practice going from that chord um, to that next chord and I'll just do that over and over again um, back to the minor and even though it, does, it doesn't sound very good and it, you know it, in the song it moves on to some other chord later I need to get this change down and develop it slowly before I could get the rest of the song down okay and then speed comes later and just following on from that fourthly when you're practicing practice single skills or single movements or single progressions uh, break it down into little chunks. So if you've if you're picking up a song for the first time, uh, it might have anything from you know four to five uh, you know a normal song might have four to five different progressions of chords. Uh, and obviously there are songs out there that might have ten or eleven, but that's that's not as common. Now what you want to do if you're starting out, you want to say, look, to play this whole song, I need to learn these five progressions. Okay, there's the G D E minor, there's the E minor B seven A minor or something like that. Okay. Um, and I'll need to learn all of these five to play the whole song. <clears throat> but in one 15 to 20 minute block of practice, you just want to work on one of those sets of transitions. Um, one set of three or four chords in a row. And then just do that over and over again. Okay? And the reason why is that your brain is trying to wrap its mind around this new process that you're putting uh, your body through. right? And the more repetition in a row that you'll get, um, the more you'll, f you'll sort of consolidate that skill. Rather than, if you, if you race through and you're learning, say, um, five different progressions, which might be 20 chords in, um, in whatever order they're in, um, it's really hard to learn what the first, you know, the first 10 are, let alone get the, the whole 20, right? Uh, if you want to think about it this way, uh, if you're memorizing, uh, say, an essay, right? 
Uh, how long's an essay? Like two to three thousand words, maybe. Okay, you're gonna be in for it if all you do is you start from word one and you go all the way up to word two thousand and you just read it all the way through and think, okay. How much of that do I remember? By the time you get to the 2000th word, you've already forgotten the way it started, right? Far better to say, okay, let's just take a small chunk. I can memorize a sentence, 10 words, okay? Um, let's just memorize my opening sentence. I can get that down in, you know, say 10 to 15 minutes, okay? And then you've got one section, you can move on to the next one, okay? So practice single skills. It might be just uh, like I had with that E minor, B7, uh, it might just be moving from one chord to another, right? Often that's the way it is with say bar chords, which we'll talk about later. But you know, say a C to a B minor, uh, the way I play my C, this is a C with a G bass, which I'll talk about another time. Uh, I'm using four fingers for this chord, and I'm using four fingers for the next chord. So there's a lot of movement going on, right? So in order to uh, practice that progression down, I'm gonna go uh, play that chord, and then look at each individual finger and think about where each one's going to move. And I'm going to take that shape down and then form the bar. So <clears throat> I'm going to do that movement over and over again uh, until I feel comfortable with doing it at speed and being able to do it without really watching it. And that's the point at which you know, okay, I'm comfortable, I think I can move on to something else. So practice single skills or single movements. Lastly, be really careful about the position of your fingers, okay? Now, it'll help if you have, um, if, if no one else has ever um, taught you how to do, play the guitar, um, it's really helpful to have, uh, either, either watch you know, someone else who's, who's very skilled doing this and watch the way that their fingers move. And there's lots of different valid ways um, to, to place your fingers, but some are better than others, okay? So I'll give you an example. Um, a lot of guitarists out there, for instance, if they're playing a, um, a D, okay, so this is, this is a normal way to play a D, um, their thumb will come around like this, okay, and that's the way that they play it. Now, remember that when you're playing strings, the whole idea is to hold the, the strings at the right frets down firmly, and um, if you don't hold them firmly enough, you know, particularly at the beginning when your fingers aren't that strong, um, the strings will buzz, or they just won't, they won't make the right sound because your fingers are actually... Um, Holding the strings enough to mute the strings and make them not make sound, not holding them enough to actually let them ring out, okay? Now, if I've got my thumb all the way up here, okay, think about how I'm holding those strings down. What muscles am I using in my hand? And um, the, the kinds of muscles I'm using are these three fingers, and then I'm kind of pushing against the back of the fretboard with kind of this, this whole section of my palm here, okay? Which is actually a really inefficient way to do it because the strongest muscle that I have in my um, in my hand is the one that drives my thumb, okay? So it's not pushing from here, I'd rather push from this big muscle through my thumb, okay? So a better way to play the D is to actually have my thumb um, nice down low here, okay? So you can see, uh, you actually will not be able to see my thumb probably from the front camera, okay? But if you have a look around, um, you can see that it's, it's nice down below. In fact, it's directly opposite as much as possible the actual fingers that are fretting, okay? So there's one thing, um, the position of your thumb vitally important. I mean, sometimes it'll creep up, especially if you're standing up playing, uh, because you have to kind of keep the whole neck of the guitar from moving around and, and that'll happen naturally. But try and um, position your thumb uh, at the back of the, of the neck. That's a really easy error to make, let your thumb creep over the top. Secondly, uh, with your fingers, um, you wanna make sure that your fingers are pushing as close as possible to perpendicular to the fretboard, okay? Because that way you'll get the maximum amount of force holding down the strings. So you don't have to press as hard in order to keep the strings down, okay? So you wanna play like this, as opposed to kind of at an angle like this, where if you think about, if you actually get your guitar out and you play it like this, you'll see that more of your finger has to press down onto the guitar. So you gotta press harder in order to put the same amount of force, okay? Now, why do a lot of people play like this with their fingers angled across the fretboard rather than pointing into the fretboard? Uh, and the reason tends to be um, that people have long fingernails, okay? So my fingernails are pretty short because I've been playing guitar for a long time and um, I've got other reasons to have short fingernails. But you can see that if I had long fingernails, they'd get in the way of where my fingertips are gonna hold the strings down, okay? Now, I know a lot of people out there, uh, particularly uh, women, are not going to be that keen on having very short fingernails, and they don't have to be as short as mine. But basically, if you can feel your fingernails um, stopping you from pushing onto the frets of the guitar, 
that's an indicator that it's gonna uh, hamper your play. You can still play, but it, it, it'll be harder for you to play quickly um, and to get the strings down nice and firmly and uh, not have any buzzing when you're holding the strings down. So don't practice too long. Uh, make sure you sit properly in a relaxed but upright way. Uh, take your time when you're practicing and going through the mo motions, so the movements that you want to practice, practice them slowly. Um, practice a single skill at a time and then you can move on to bigger things and uh, be very careful with the positions of your fingers and think through what they're doing um, so that you can um, play with the maximum efficiency and uh, you know not have to put as much more strength into it than you have to.